So we're going to try this again. What is going on? This is Altona. Today, this is my very first wing. And this wing is actually built off of Aerostuff FPV's design, but there are some differences. Um, his is built for FPV, mine is not. And so I'm going to go through what I've done with this wing and tell you a little bit about it. But if you decide you would like to build one for yourself, you want to go check out his design build and um, and then you can make variations the same way I've made variations. And I'll tell you a little bit about those variations. Now, I have not taken this guy out for a maiden yet. Today, I wanted to just give you the overview first of what I've done here and how I built it. And then we're going to take it out in a future video and fly it. So if you're looking for all the different electronics and whatnot that I used to build this guy, I'll put them into the description as well as I'll pin them in a comment below so you can go through and use any of the same electronics that you want to to build yours. So let's talk about this plane real quickly. Now as you hear she is turned on right now I have a battery in there and my my radio is on so she's ready to go and um, so I have a couple of things set up but let's talk about the plane real quick. So first of all as I said, Aerostuff FPV, his is set up for um, FPV. I don't do FPV anymore outdoors because I don't have a spotter. I'm usually flying by myself. And so to stay within FAA regulations, um, I choose not to. And of course, I fly all of my, my large planes. I fly them in a Freo. But if I do decide to fly them anywhere else, I do have the Holy Stone Remote ID module, which I highly recommend because even though nobody's talking about it it works and it and, and it's a great price if you want to comply and i plan on complying just to throw that out there so anyway this is the wing a couple of things that are different from aerostuff fpv first of all the you'll notice that the wing tips are tapered that was a mistake in the design because as i was building watching his video i made cuts in the wrong direction and so I had to go back through and cut in the correct direction which then ended up putting a taper at the end of my wings and I didn't mean to do that but I did it anyway so I just went ahead and still put these on here and um, so she's hopefully she's she's still fly fine I know that's going to change the flight characteristics from his plane just a little bit but I'm sure there's quite a few other things about this plane that's going to change the flight characteristics as it is so many of my parts on this plane were 3D printed. I used my Anacubic Cobra to 3D print many of my parts and I went into on shape and designed many of the parts as well. I wanted to make sure that my ESC, which is about in here in the back, which I'll show you in a second, had plenty of airflow. So I did open up the back end here a little bit. Um, by the way, this is a 3D printed, uh, my design 3D printed uh, motor mount and then uh, opened up the back end here and so that the air could escape so without popping the hatch open, hopefully. And then I also designed some vents for the front to allow some air to flow into the, the entire uh, fuselage to help cool, uh, keep the electronics cool. In the front, I did think about just putting my Insta360 GO2 on the front of this plane, but I decided that because of the fact that I want to be able to change the batteries out, I may want to fly this thing 20 times in a day and still continue to capture the video I can change out the SD card in this guy and I can put additional batteries which I have in this camera this one's the uh, Hero 7 I have a Hero 5 I designed this holder to fit that and I know GoPros they have their own mounting system and all that kind of stuff but if I use the GoPro or action camera mounting system it would actually put the camera up higher and I didn't want that I wanted the camera to kind of blend into the body itself and I didn't want to put velcro so on the to. camera because then I'd have to peel that velcro off every time I wanted to change a battery yeah, out a so that's the Take reason care. why I chose to do it this way I designed my own uh, holder it does have a little bit of uh, cushion in the bottom and hopefully we'll see if there's vibration because I will be flying it with the camera on it. The other thing is these particular cameras are kind of old so if they get damaged or come down in a messed up crash and damage the camera I'm not as concerned about it. I still will be using my GoPro Hero 10 for ca capturing the line of sight video. On the, on the wing itself 
will be from the GoPro. A couple, uh, one other thing that's different than what Aer Aerostuff FPV, he uses tape to hold his, his, his compartments closed. I don't really care for that. I want to use something where I don't have to w worry about taping it down or carrying tape to the field with me and all that kind of stuff. On top of the fact that his actually opens from the front and I didn't care for that part of the design either, even though it works for him. But my thought is if, wing, if wind gets underneath it and for some reason the tape fails or whatever mechanism that I'm using to hold it closed, if it fails, then it pops open in flight and then that could possibly cause a crash. So I chose to make mine open from the rear. I'm using some nice little magnets and I've created some little standoffs here and then mine opens up completely. And then this entire front piece basically is my battery tray. Plenty of space to move my battery around to make sure I have my center of bounce or center of gravity proper. ER6 Express LRS receiver, as always, because that's what I'll be using. And I've said this many times. I've got, um, and then the A3 Super 4, this being the very first aircraft that I'm going to have a gyro in that I'm taking out to the field to fly. Um, that I put in there. <laughs> One of my first designs. So... A3 Super 4 is set up and ready to go. It's working perfectly, except I noticed that I do have, um, it's compensating in one mode in the incorrect direction. So I'm going to have to fix that. And then, of course, my 40 amp ESC. And this is from RC Electric. And I've been using these. I have a 60 amp in my other plane. And then this one is my Turbo um, Flash Hobby motor. This one is the 2826 1000 kV motor. I don't know. Again, I'm going to have to do the math to see or go through and, and do the configuration and whatnot to make sure that that motor along with this um, <clears throat> master air screw 9 times 4.5 inch prop is actually going to be enough power and thrust in order to keep this guy in the air along with keeping from burning out my my ESC <laughs> in the process. Of course I have, these are actually plastic gear servos, one on each side. All of my 3D prints are actually 3D printed for my Anacubic Cobra. And uh, Anacubic, I think they make great 3D printers. Mine pulled out of the box, it simply was very easy and that's what I've been using for all of my 3D prints here in the past. Um, and I've 3D print a lot of my parts for my planes myself because I can't often find a designed part to do the function I wanted to do. So I designed my own part to, do, to serve the function like this case for my GoPro in the front, as well as skids for the end, ends of my wings. So if it comes down a little wonky when I land, at least that will take, those will take the uh, brunt of the abuse and hopefully my wing tips will survive. And so, like I said, I've got this guy set up Throttle active. She's ready to go, and she is. <laughs> I blew my plane up over there. She is ready, ready to go. Um, and let's see what else we have here. Then we got um, my rates. And then, of course, the A3 Super 4 is currently off. Now that is to help with the wind in a normal mode. And the horizon is for keeping the purpose of keeping the plane level while it's in flight. So right now, as I do this, it's actually compensating in the wrong direction. So I'm going to have to fix that. So I did step away and made a few corrections. One of them is now this guy is actually doing exactly what it's supposed to as far as correcting for the travel. Um, stabilizing the aircraft as needed. So I had to go into the Hobby Eagle A3 Super 4 into the settings and actually change a couple of things and I did that for my computer with it still in the aircraft. And one other thing that I forgot to mention is that the setup on the Hobby Eagle A3 Super 4. So using the Hobby Eagle A3 Super 4 with this as a flying wing, essentially you're going to set up the Hobby Eagle A3 Super 4 as a wing. And then in your radio, you're actually setting up the ER6 as a regular 
uh, aircraft, four channel aircraft. You don't do anything different to that setting. So I use the wizard, essentially, I use the wizard to set the uh, ER6 up in my radio as a, or set up the model in my radio as a flying wing. But when I put the A3 Super 4 in, also set up as a wing, what I noticed was that my surfaces were not doing what they were supposed to. Essentially, one of my ailerons was acting as an aileron, and the other one was acting as the elevator. And I was like trying to figure out what was going on. So I went back in and totally deleted out all of the mixes that the radio creates in the wizard for a flying wing. And I tried it again and it worked great. So what that tells me is, or what I'm sharing this with you is, that if you're using the A3 Super 4 on a wing, Essentially, you're just going to set your model up in your receiver as a regular aircraft. Uh, regular, essentially, four-channel aircraft, even though this guy doesn't have a rudder, turned off channel four, basically not using channel four. Um, but I am using the aileron channel and the elevator channel normally in this model setup on this radio, and then using the A3 Super 4 to then mix all of that into a wing. So that's the way that's set up. That's basically a quick overview. If you do happen to have questions, make sure you ask those questions down in the comments section. Everything as far as electronics that I currently have in this guy, I'll drop them down in the, the comments section or uh, in the description, as well as I will also make sure that I put the weight and the overall wingspan. So this this plane, by the way, is called the, uh, or the tail number that I'm giving this plane is CA53W1. And the reason why this, it makes sense to me is Creative Altone 53, which is 53 inch wingspan. And W1 is my very first wing built. And of course, I've got Creative Altone here on the other wing. And that, those graphics were actually, oh, I didn't even show you that. At the end, I've got my logo. So those graphics and logos were actually um, uh, their permanent vinyl cut by my Cricut Joy Extra, extra um, little vinyl cutter that I picked up not too long ago. And that's what I'll be using to put all of my graphics or design graphics and whatnot for my planes in the future. Thank you so much for coming by and checking this guy out with me. This is gonna be a blast. I'm really, really enjoying building these planes and um, sharing the experience with you. I do have some other projects like rebuilding a fuselage for the for, for the other plane as well as fixing my, I plan on fixing my, my balsa wood plane and making it a tail dragger and hopefully I'll be flying that one soon. And I'm gonna fly the, the I'm gonna fly the wings off of those three planes for the rest of, of this, of the season. And I may actually build a couple more, but as long as these fly well, that's what you're gonna be seeing for a little while. And I may, again, I've got a couple of pro other projects in my mind that I may be working on before the end of the season, but hey, that's gonna be it. And again, answering any questions that you might have on the electronics that I'm using, how I, how I came up with design, what my thoughts were and all of that kind of stuff, I'll be willing to share that with you as well in future videos. So if you like what you've seen so far, thank you so much. Hit subscribe and I look forward to seeing you again in a future video. Take care.